This show is brought to you by IndieWrestling.us. Check out IWC, RWA, and more. Click the Fight TV link on WrestlingMayhemShow.com to support this show and watch pro wrestling, MMA, boxing, and so much more. And listeners like you, support this show at Patreon.com slash WrestlingMayhemShow. Hey guys, it's the Indie Mayhem Show, where we uh, chat with people in and around independent professional wrestling. I'm Mike Sorg, at Sorgatron, on the Twitter, uh, video professional here, working with a lot of the groups, including a Stomp Out for Cancer. One of the participants is joining us here today, as well as the IWC, the RWA, and whoever else will have me with a camera, and over at IndieWrestling.us doing our part to get it out there in front of people, this great professional wrestling that's going on in the area and abroad. Uh, you can check out everything, of course, at WrestlingMayhemShow.com. You subscribe to this show. Look for the Indie Mayhem Show on iTunes, Stitcher, Spreaker, iHeartRadio, and the video versions are on the Wrestling Mayhem Show Facebook and YouTube page. Drop a line to Good Times at WrestlingMayhemShow.com or 412-206-WMS0 is the hotline. Let us know what you think of people we have coming up, people we've had in the past, people you think we should have on in the future. We get a lot of people from those recommend- recommendations have really added a lot of them to the list this uh, this uh, uh, year uh, of, of these interviews. And, of course, um, you can join us here. Um, of course, a lot of the shows are happening Tuesday nights at live.wrestlingmayhemshow.com. We have a lot of guests coming up in the next two months that are going to be doing their Indie Mayhem shows alongside the regular show. And, of course, just like this instance, you never know we're going to pop up and get somebody in the studio. And speaking of in-studio, one, as I'm battling the sun, if you're wondering what's going on with this situation, if you're on the video, uh, daytime podcasting is a lot hard when you have a giant window with the sun this time of day, I guess. <laughs> uh, so we're battling with that. But it, it, here uh, is uh, the Reaper, Matt Connor, joining us in studio. How you doing, man? I'm doing good, man. How are you? Thanks for having me. No problem. Uh, it was great to get you. have been on the list for a while, and it was good that I was waiting for us to have a nice studio to invite a lot of people, and I'm glad to get you in the mix. All right. No, I'm glad to be here. Awesome. Uh, so we like to kind of uh, jump off with a little bit of an icebreaker here. Sure. Uh, to, to you know get to know you a little bit. Uh, so how, what is your first memory of pro wrestling? My first memory of pro wrestling uh, is very character based. Uh, my earliest memory involves gold dust. Watching Raw with my dad every Monday, uh, even though I wasn't supposed to, I was supposed to be in bed. Uh, just i remember i don't remember who he was working with i don't remember any i just remember seeing this guy in the golden robe and the wig and coming out and being flamboyant and over the top and just being mesmerized by what is this guy i like i'm too young to know what androgynous means and you know but just mesmerized by this over the top larger than life character so gold dust, and that and that kind of got you into it, and, and it, that's what got me intrigued in just these, you know, my first taste of what how big characters in wrestling can be, mm-hmm. and then from there, you know, you got the Undertakers, the Canes, the the Austins, Rocks, uh, Razor Ramones, everybody in that that came from that era forward. Just, um, I guess the it's weird because. It, I guess now that I think about it, I came in it just as the characters were going out, mm-hmm. and that's when the Shawn Michaels and the Bret Hart's and stuff started coming in. Mm-hmm. So I would get the character from Gold Dust, and then I would start seeing less of that, less of I guess you would say the the dumpster drosies and the, those types. Start seeing a lot more strict wrestling, which I didn't know the difference at the time. Wrestling's wrestling, so I was up for whatever. So so you so you're, you're, you got in just in time to start missing the goon. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I I dodged the goon just by <laughs> just by a little bit. Just by a little bit. Yeah, that's great. So so how do you you know? So you're you're on with that. You know, obviously attracted to the big, colorful characters and mm-hmm. the different stuff. Um, how did you go from like watching to deciding you wanted to get in the ring and and, and do this thing? Or like when did that click to you? Um, honestly, it's the uh, I th- I think a lot of people use this answer, but it's true. Uh, the ninety nine. No Mercy tag team ladder match, mm-hmm. Edge and Christian and the Hardys. It uh, the match itself was impressive. Obviously, all the stuff, uh, the innovative stuff they're doing as a tag teams with the ladders, and it's a really exciting match to watch. But honestly, the thing that hooked me is like, man, I want that feeling. Was the next night on Raw, all four of them came out to the ring, had a 
face to face, didn't say anything, nothing, and just got a standing ovation right away. The whole arena on their feet applauding these guys. And it gave me goosebumps sitting at home. I'm like, man, I want that feeling. I don't like if just watching it gives me that. I want to be in there doing it. Mm-hmm. So you want to be on the on, on the other end of receiving that. <laughs> yeah, I want <laughs> I want that standing ovation. Yeah. And uh yeah, I just that started my my uh pursuit forward trying to find that feeling, trying to get that feeling. Mm-hmm. And uh that's really it's really where the uh initial moment like came in my head that I could actually try and do that. But then again, when you're a kid, that stuff seems unreachable, like unattainable. These guys are larger than life. How how would you, uh, at the time, a small, uh, a young kid from a small town in West Virginia, how are you ever going to do anything like that? And eventually, as you grow older, you realize maybe it's a, it's a little easier to at least get started than you think it is. Mm-hmm. Especially these days, everyone's got a school. Seems. Absolutely. So so how did you like find out like? You know that discovery of how can I get in the ring, uh, finding a score or things like that. Did it, did it come just come naturally? Were you going to indie shows and found it? It's a lot of research, mm-hmm. a lot of research, especially in West Virginia at the time. There were not a lot of schools, at least near me. They were all either in the south or the north, nowhere in the middle. Um, I I tried out a few schools, tried out a few places. After one or two. I just had a run of bad luck, man. I'd go to a couple of sessions and then they would close down. Oh, jeez. And they would, uh, you know, lose their building, something. Like, well, man, I just, all these, all these false starts. And then um, I contacted a guy named Mike Howard in, down in Parkersburg. He was running shows at the time. And he directed me to this gentleman named Brian Logan. Brian Logan, uh, the original Smoky Mountain. He was an OVW. The original Disciples of Sin. He's been around. Luckily, he directed me to Brian because Brian uh, is great at showing you the fundamentals, and that's really, uh, really the best start I could have had was with Brian. I wouldn't have had it any way. But the problem was, after three months of training, Brian he split for his own reasons. I won't bury Brian here, um, but he split, and then I'm like, well. I don't know if I'm necessarily done. I need to keep going. So I contacted NWA Mountain State uh, at the time down in uh, Beckley, West Virginia, and went down there to try to continue my training, which turned into my, having my first match the first day. So it kind of just a lot of a lot of false starts and then just a lot of falling into things. Mm-hmm. So as you got through it, you know, you, you kind of seems landed on this on the Reaper character and everything. Mm-hmm. Um, was that the first character that you kind of went into, or is that something that developed over time? Uh, the initial idea of the Reaper is something I kind of just uh, thought up. I didn't know what it was at the time or what it would mm-hmm. be, but uh, Sons of Anarchy was a big show at the time. I was a fan of it, and uh, I just kept noticing, you know, they've got the, their patches of Reaper. And just thinking about it, you know, they've had Undertakers, Dead Man Kane, the Devil's Favorite Demon. I've, at the time, never heard of any Grim Reaper of any sort in professional wrestling. Like, I could do something with that. So, the first first year or so, it was just a moniker. I was just a guy in a vest and a chin beard. Named, they called himself the Reaper. They called himself the Reaper, <laughs> Matt Connard. <laughs> And then, um, so it was one of those, like, because we see this, you know, you always see that, like, especially first year guys are like, you're like, I'm the Reaper. It's like, great. What's so Reaper about you? Yeah, what's, you? what's like, Reaper about you? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Where is it? That's exactly what I was doing. Um, but then I started becoming, uh, started becoming, uh, travel, travel partners with a guy named Zach Vincent. And Zach at the time was doing a lot of different stuff, a lot of stuff with masks and paint and like just really, pushing the boundaries of what was going on wrestling at the time. And he bought this skull mask and he's like, I don't think this fits what I'm trying to do. Do you want this? You're a reaper. I'm like, yeah, but it's a mask who wears like, it's, it looks kind of looks Halloweeny. I don't think this is going to work. And he just kept pushing and pushing the issue. And I just happened upon a cloak as well. I'm like, fine, I'll try it and see. And it, people liked it so much. It just kept going and it's evolved over time from there and mm-hmm. it's just turned to what i'm doing now 
Yeah, it, and I know you, you, you know, obviously a friend of the show, Jason Gorey, I know here locally and, and, and I've seen him pop up in a lot of places like Remix and everything. Yeah. I know I know you guys have been tag, team, uh, tag teams there, I mean, obviously uh, lately in Meadville uh, as a replacement when the Hardys weren't allowed to wrestle because, yeah. well, at least they showed up. Yeah. <laughs> you know, uh, stupid <laughs> WrestleMania. But, uh, Dumb tag titles. Stupid tag titles, <laughs> but still great to, you know, be the ones that are called out by the Hardys. Absolutely. But, but you know, so that was my first kind of exposure to you was seeing you in these videos online you know because it always seems like there's a you know between gory and uh name escapes me crimson up in cleveland erie area right uh, did a stint here in pittsburgh um there's always that like evil guy faction right <laughs> yeah <laughs> and it's like okay there's another evil guy what's up you know <laughs> yep. yep if there's more than one of us in a certain territory we all just get just roped in together happen yeah right? so, yeah uh yeah it's um it's kind of how this partnership slash friendship with me and gory started was just we were kind of we were just two spooky guys in the same place mm -hmm. like we're just gonna put you together and uh a lot of times that can just turn into just turn into a bunch of guys that look creepy together have no chemistry right luckily gory and i along uh, as we go forward with ron mathis um have really really clicked from the start and just became quick friends and now uh it's really hard if I get put in a creepy faction with anybody else because it's like, man, this is cool, but this isn't uh, what inevitably turned into the Headless Horseman. This isn't Gory. This isn't Ron. Mm -hmm. And luckily, we run in the same circles where we always end up together anyway. So right, it really right. doesn't doesn't matter. So, so I mean, from that, you know, um, you know, we, we talked about on last week's episode with Billy about being a certain type of character and trying not to fall into. Um, uh, you know a little bit of a a, a stereotype with it right mm -hmm. you know there's a lot of creepy characters obviously we we're just talking about you know yeah. and uh, i'm just seeing another faction uh, i can't remember if you're part of it in pcw or you're up, up there with those guys primal uh, uh no uh, uh oh uh premier dabrowski yeah, deal yeah, yeah, yeah no yeah. i'm not up there um so so like how do you kind of separate yourself from the other standard creepy guys out there i guess uh, well, um, while you're on that, that's another thing that's detrimental about being a creepy guy in this area. If one promotion, say Joe, for instance, has one too many, yeah. if you're the odd creepy guy out, <laughs> they don't need you. <laughs> so we got too many creepy guys. One here. too many no, creepy no. guys. I've we got, got enough. We got, we got a new one coming in. We're trying him out. And, you know. Exactly. And I'll be honest, if I'm going to pick a creepy guy between myself and Gory, I'm going to pick Gory every time. Absolutely. Gory's great. Um that's a, that's something I continue to try to do with this character is not be roped into just another creepy guy. Mm -hmm. I try to continuously find ways where I'm a creepy guy with a little something different. Uh, as of late, I've noticed that not just with creepy guys, with a lot of different people, masks are the thing. Everybody loves masks all of a sudden. Mm -hmm. G Raver's got one. G Raver's yeah. got one, but his are beautiful. Like yeah, I think yeah. he does himself. But just a lot of guys who even don't really need a mask are wearing masks. Mm -hmm. So I'm in the uh, motion of like, well, maybe it's time to get rid of the mask. DJ Z kind of goes another direction with it lately. Yeah, <laughs> man, <laughs> that uh, it's impressive what he does. Uh, I thought a motorcycle was being writ out, wrote, written out in court time last show <laughs> when he came out with that outfit. Like he had headlights on it and everything. I'm just right. like, oh, you're gonna blow out my ringside camera. I don't know. <laughs> I don't even know if we can film you at this point. You know. So it's just about doing just doing your homework, watching things that you're even outside of wrestling, watching different stuff, reading different stuff, just looking for different angles. You can add to your character to be different mm -hmm. and not just settling into the role of, you know, scary guy, a or B, you just got to be committed to it at all times. Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. So, so, so from that, um, um, obviously you're, you're doing a uh, wrestling with death the mm -hmm. podcast. Yeah. Uh, and we were just talking on the show this week cause the question came up on bringing it to the table on WWE network. Are there too many wrestling podcasts? You know, and <laughs> yeah. we kind of got into a little bit of, you know, how many different ones there are and everything. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, what first of all, why the heck are you podcasting <laughs> <laughs> in, no, the, in this world of too many wrestling podcasts? Supposedly that's initially why I did it once for a couple years ago. Yeah. And I had it run for like 30 episodes. And then I got to that point where like, why, why am I doing this? Because mm -hmm. my format was generic mm -hmm. as shit. Mm -hmm. Like it, like I put it up against all the other ones. Like you sound the same. Yeah, you're doing local guys, which is good for them. Mm -hmm. But you're not, you're not different. You're not doing anything innovative. Why are you doing this? So I just put it down, and then I just picked it up as recently because 
uh, I miss uh, as much as it's it's kind of running with the crowd doing a podcast. I missed doing it. I miss having conversations with people and like hearing stories. And I don't know. I just really enjoyed it. So I decided if I'm going to do it, I'm going to find a different way to do it. Mm -hmm. I'm going to do different stuff. So I took inspiration from other podcasts I like that are outside the wrestling realm. Um, like Doug Loves Movies, for instance. I play games with my guests now. And if you haven't listened to Doug Loves Movies, Doug Benson, he's a comedian. And he has a movie-based podcast where he has guests on and plays movie-related games with them in front of a live crowd. Nobody in wrestling is playing games. Nobody's doing that. Like, I'm going to make up games on my own and play them at the end of the show with my guests just for fun. You don't get anything out of it, but you get to, you know, just have a laugh for a minute with it's a different your guests. Side, it's a different side of things, right? right? I mean, I mean, I remember having Zach Gowan on a gaming podcast we did, and he's like, great, nobody's going to ask me how Hulk Hogan is. You know, so <laughs> it's, a, it's, a different, it's a different aspect. I, I like that. Right, and I try not to stick to the, uh, uh, the career-based questions. Right. Like, in the beginning, I try to, like, just ballpark it by the mm -hmm. end i want to find a subject related to wrestling like just at how wrestling works that i can relate to them with like for instance the my only repeat guest so far on my new run is marcus because marcus has such an innovative and different look on the business i love mm -hmm. hearing his point of view I love on that's that's one of the episodes i got to check out and i really dug that and that's when because marcus man is, is somebody that i always hear about right mm -hmm. and i'm just like who the heck is this guy you know is yeah. it, you know and, and you hear it it's like okay now i get who the hell he is right you know so now and then i reached out to him and, and everything and i hope to have a conversation with him on here no, soon. definitely marcus is like Marcus is a guy who knows you can't reinvent the wheel, mm -hmm. but he's always looking at ways to make the wheel look different. Like, what different tread can we use? What what kind of unique looking rim can we put on it? He's always thinking of different ways to at least make the wheel look different. And that's why I always go to Marcus when I'm stuck. Like, when I have rider's block or I'm, I have an idea I'm not sure about. So it's a good, good bouncer. Oh yeah, he's definitely things. a good bouncer. That's awesome. That's <clears throat> awesome. So, is this something that you know? Are you, are you just kind of doing it for your own entertainment to get these conversations? Is it something that that you're seeing kind of factoring into your career and growing your, I guess, brand as a reaper? Yeah. Um, I mean, the re <clears throat> excuse me. The original reason I went back to it was just because my mission statement when I started it in the first place was to give people I think are talented in the local area that maybe people don't know about a little bit more of a platform. Mm -hmm. That's really my main reason behind it. Uh, obviously it's, it's my podcast got my name on it. It's going to benefit me, uh, as far as exposure and stuff as the host, but I'm just, as long as I can, as long as people are giving me feedback saying how much they like it, which I've started to get recently, especially with the Marcus episodes and, people realizing it's not just uh where'd you grow up and all that yeah uh phoned in nonsense um i'm gonna keep doing it because i enjoy it i really dig what uh the new fan, uh, platform i've come up with and as long as it keeps being fun i'll keep doing it like it's i really don't care about numbers and stuff i mean yeah that's if nobody's listening who way you doing it but i'm enjoying it that's that's why i'm doing it absolutely I, we also find that you never know who is listening in, in the smaller numbers All right and it could be somebody important that makes a good connection yeah i might come across it you mm -hmm. know out of a recommendation or something i don't know absolutely um so uh, okay from that mm -hmm. uh uh you know we like to kind of close off with a couple uh our standard questions. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so who are you watching these days? Who, who's kind of getting your attention, whether it be a promotion, TV show, or any wrestlers in particular? Um, as far as wrestlers go, people need to stop sleeping on Edric Everhart. When I first met Edric, he was solid. He's always been solid as far as long as I've known him, but he was just missing something. He was the guy in like black trunks and black kick pads, and he had a shirt that literally said "poop" on it. Um, oh, wait, it said "poop" on it. Yeah, apparently, what the story is is he went to a shirt maker to get a shirt that literally had just had like an emoji poop on it. Yeah, and he said, "Just put poop on it," and they literally print out the words "poop" on it. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Um, it just went with it. Yeah. Sure. It just, which, that's Edric's sense of humor, so it makes sense. But uh, 
No, just the past couple of years, he's found himself as a character. With this new ugly thing he's doing, this hipster gimmick. And every match I've seen him have, like I can't remember seeing him have a bad match as of late. Like he's really on his game right now. See one of those, um, the um, uh, something syndicate that System Elite. System Elite. That's right. Yeah. Uh, uh, okay. Okay. Yeah. He's just like he's dedicated himself so much. He's gotten in great shape, and he's he could be a great singles guy for anybody. Mm-hmm. I think just because they uh, they see him as in this tag team with System Elite that he can't be a singles guy, but he's people, anybody in the area need to get on him because he's just sitting there uh, and needs to be used a lot more often. Mm-hmm. And uh, yeah. One thing that reminded me of something I wanted to touch on, because we were talking about a little bit before the show here, how you're, you're here in Pittsburgh, mm-hmm. but somehow you get booked out everywhere outside of Pittsburgh. Like yeah. I said, I always see you on the West Virginia shows, the Ohio shows uh-huh. and, and, like and and not on even the Pittsburgh IWC shows. You end up in Clearfield and Beaver Falls and 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 Royal <laughs> Valley or whatever right. Right, that that they ended up doing, but not here in court time. It seems ever. Right, right, yeah, but yeah. Uh, the big show with the Hardys and Meadville, but uh-huh. not, not here. So how how does that happen? <laughs> I don't know. So ever since I've come to Pittsburgh, I've I've had a hard time finding a home, like a home promotion here. I was with PWX for three years. Mm-hmm. But I never felt like that was my place. I always felt like an outsider there. Right. Like I didn't feel embraced by management there. So finally, when uh, when a group of them got uh, got fired there for uh, whatever reason, I left. It's like uh, just clearly it was I didn't need to be there anymore, and that was kind of my kind of my sign. Well, maybe it's time to go. So I left. And I was plenty happy with sitting, sitting at home if I needed to. Mm-hmm. Uh, I didn't expect anything. And then uh, I got tied up with uh, Justin Plummer, our mutual friend Chris LaRusso. And uh, he uh, Plummer brought me in to do a few things here and there, which I'm very grateful for the opportunities. I filled in for him here and there when he's needed me. And we've done good work together. The biggest problem with that is IWC is the hottest promotion in Pittsburgh right now. He has... I can only imagine gets how many emails a day from people wanting to get in there. I see the ones that come into the Facebook. Yeah, there's right. A lot. Yeah, there's a lot, and I completely understand where roster space would be a problem. Mm-hmm. But Plummer knows anytime he needs needs somebody to come and save him last minute, I'm always around. Mm-hmm. Um, Hell, you've had title matches. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I've 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 wrestled for two of the three titles. Yeah, there you go. So. Um, <laughs> But especially now, Brandon K's got Rise mm-hmm. going on, and funny enough, I'm meeting with Brandon tomorrow to talk to him. So hoping that Rise can turn into a place where I can lay my hat around here and work on a regular basis in the area. And Brandon is a guy who I respect a great deal and has such history in this area that, I mean, if you're going to work for someone that's there, why not him? Mm-hmm. You know, and he's got great young talent there that I would love to work with and. So that that may be that may be the way I'm headed. It's awesome. It, it, it is kind of cool, you know. I got a good vibe of them at the Stomp Out Cancer Show um, for the venue and how they're doing things. I love to see see their presentation online. So mm-hmm. I'm kind of hoping that they kind of. I kind of wish them the best there as far as being something new, different, you know, on their side of things. Absolutely. So awesome. Um, so you've been at this for a little bit. Uh, mm-hmm. How many years have you been pro? Seven years. Now. Seven years now. Yeah. What is the best and worst thing about indie wrestling? <laughs> um, the best thing about indie wrestling is, I think the best and worst thing about indie wrestling is it's a, f- f- for the most part, a free form of expression. Like, yeah, you've got your promoter that wants a certain thing. Booker wants you to do this, but as far as what you can and can't do out there, there's really no limitations. There's not a lot of people don't have TV. There's a lot of shows where you only have 50 people or less in the crowd. And it's just the best platform to work on your craft and, and, uh, fine tune it. Um, and then get your way up to the bigger ones that I don't, that yeah, it's independent wrestling, but 
I don't necessarily see it as independent anymore in a lot of places. Places like AAW, AIW, PWG, those places are doing great business mm-hmm. and it's, they're doing it their way. But man, especially PWG, that's become a beast all its own. Like that's they're in, they're independent. In the fact they're doing it themselves, but. Man, the crowds they're drawing and the business they're doing. It's- I mean, the tickets are like inc- like over a hundred bucks now, aren't they? Mm-hmm. Just just for them, they and s- they, they go still, like they sell out like nothing. instantly. Because I know the guys on We Watch Wrestling are always talking about it. And it's like, well, I missed it. Yeah, yeah I missed it. You got to be know? on your game to get tickets for man. that, man. And and, and it's still like it, it. It sounds amazing because they still sound like uh, they run the place like an low end indie show when mm-hmm. you get there. Right, <laughs> but still, there's. Sophia Vergara there and uh, Joe what's Macanello. his Macanello there. Yeah. Um, it, it's incredible to see that and see that getting that kind of uh, uh, exposure. You know, I will I will say this now that I think about it. I think one of the biggest downsides of indie wrestling is how easily indie wrestlers will fall into trends. Mm-hmm. How easily they will see something that's hot at the moment and then just jump all over it. I don't think indie wrestlers think enough for themselves. They they're trying their best to do what's hot at the moment and just run with it. When in fact, you should see whatever's hot at the moment and run away from it. Uh, do you have a, a broad example of that? I guess not to throw anybody under the bus for this. No, I'm I'm not going to throw anyone's name out there, but I will throw something out there that pops comes to mind. Something that's very hot right now is uh, not just uh, striking general, but a uh, jumping knee strike. A lot of people are seeing how easy it is to make that look yeah. incredible, and then just you know everyone's doing it now. You know, it's 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 an easy thing to do to make it look devastating, and I've done it. It's kind of like the the super kick syndrome, right? Exactly. I mean, yeah. Exactly. Which I didn't even bring that up because it's already uh, in the consciousness of wrestling already looked at as a transition. Yeah. You know, like that's what I'm talking about. Something like that. Like people just jump on something and go with it. There's a comment on the chat. What's up? Chris LaRusso is calling you out and saying, hey. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, Chris. Sorry. To be fair, Chris was the first one I saw do it. Like personally. <laughs> he was the first one I saw do it. Okay. So, okay. He, so, just- so he's the hipster of the super kick is what you're trying to say here, right? <laughs> <laughs> um, hashtag super kick hish, hipster <laughs> super kick hipster there you go chris Let's jump on that i don't think the heir apparent things uh long for this world jump on trevor super kick hipster trevor's out there in the chat saying less knee strikes who even does that <laughs> <laughs> awesome uh well on that note, where can people find you where is the podcast at uh what general promotions do you typically pop up that people can find you in their area all right let's see if i can do this bump from memory you can follow me on twitter and instagram at reaper matt c uh you can follow the podcast at wrestling death too if you want to but that's whatever um <laughs> that's the way to promote your yeah, podcast the way, to, you way to get people there uh you can listen to podcasts uh, wrestling with death on itunes um for android users you can listen to it on podcast attic it's an app on android and you can get it on youtube as well mm-hmm. um it's awesome. Uh, as far as promotions go, I'm going to pull my calendar out because I'm going to get dates wrong and promoters are going to get mad at me. Um, August 11th, you can find me Madison, West Virginia, All Star Wrestling. Uh, August 12th, whether I'm there or not, you should go to Rise in Connellsville. I'm sorry, I'm laughing because I just saw uh, Chris LaRusso throws move list in trash. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, Chris. I didn't mean to do that, buddy. Um, August 26th, uh, Mid Ohio Wrestling in uh, Ohio. I don't have the I don't have the city in my calendar. Shit. But these are all places that people catch us later. Those are all promotions that you're popping. Yeah, up Black Diamond regular. Wrestling yeah. in Weirton on the 27th of August. Yeah. And I've got since I'm wearing their shirt, I've got to throw it out there. Um, September 16th, Remix Pro Wrestling, Marietta, Ohio. Uh, their second throwdown for the year, which is going to be their last one. So in Probably until April next year, you need to come out. We've got Bully Ray, Colt Cabana, Hornswoggle. Mm-hmm. It's going to be a great show. So 
be there for that one. Hornswoggle. <laughs> yeah, Hornswoggle, man. <laughs> there you go. Yeah. Have you worked with Hornswoggle? I have not. It's the first time I'll be on the show with Hornswoggle. That's awesome. I'm intrigued awesome. to see how taller I am. I know. Man. There you go. I know Britt Baker's been like feuding and tag teaming with her with him in like like AIW. Yeah, or they something. seem to be something they crazy seem to be going tied on up there. together a lot. It's like. Uh, yeah okay yeah sure yeah <laughs> <laughs> pro wrestling guys <laughs> absolutely yeah well thank you so much the reaper mac honored here on the show yeah. in the studio here in our beach view beach view bunker uh at sorgatron media studios go check it out and support everything else going on there's some reaper uh, uh matches over there on indie wrestling.us of course yeah including his brush with the hardy boys in uh-huh. that uh iwc Su- night of the superstars this year yeah did you did you get the, the hang with the have you, you've been on a few shows with them in Remix, i've worked right? with matt a couple times yeah yeah whether he remembers me or not he, i've worked with him um <laughs> no i got to chat with them a little bit just about like the match and how they're doing and stuff they're yeah. they're cool guys yeah both they, of them yeah, they, they seem pretty awesome. I got to chat with them after the show, too. So, uh, yeah, that's great. So, uh, go check them out and support everything at IndieWrestling.us and all the promotions that he chatted about here on this show. And check out all the rest of the interviews we have going on. Over 170 of these episodes. And we talked to with a lot of people. Some of them may be in WWE now on Monday night uh, and all over the place. Uh, so, it's a really good catalog for you guys to go back and dig into some of these guys before they were stars Britt baker on here first year and second year and uh you know before and after getting squashed by nia Jax. it's it's pretty cool to see uh some of those perspectives uh over the years here so check it out and until next time support indie wrestling this show is a member of the sorgatron media podcast network Find out more at sorgatronmedia.com.